In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I welcome you to this service of Holy Communion from St Margaret Lothbury and wherever you are watching it from, it's great to have you with us. Uh, we uh, have our Monday service here, which is just virtual, and then tomorrow our main communion service where there will be people joining us as well. But it's wonderful that you're able to be with us uh, for this service again or for the first time. So let us pray. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Let us pray. O Almighty and most merciful God, of thy bountiful goodness keep us, we beseech thee, from all things that may hurt us, that we, being ready both in body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish those things that thou wouldst have done, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Colossians. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body and be thankful that the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your heart, singing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 22nd chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king who made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burnt up their city. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, 
but they who were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all, as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then saith the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and Giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the things that I hate is being late. I'm very keen, particularly in the last few years, to get to places in good time and not have that rush and that sense of tension uh, which always goes when you're at the last minute or realise that you're going to be late. I felt that on Saturday when I was going for a walk with an old friend. I went to the local tube station uh, and found that not only were three of the four lines that went from that particular tube station stopped for the weekend, but that the fourth line was temporarily suspended. There was absolutely no way I was going to get there by two. So I dashed back up to street level, waited for a 25 bus to take me, then found that was too full. And then as I was texting uh, the friend that I was going to meet, the 205, which I could have caught, shot by without stopping. By the time I got onto the bus, I was terribly tense and pretty cross and really kicking myself for not having left at the house earlier or checked uh, whether the tubes were working. It was only halfway to uh, the city when I suddenly thought, I'm going to see a friend. We've known each other for years. We're going to spend the afternoon walking together and I shall be 40 minutes late. Really, that doesn't matter. Where our relationship is strong enough uh, for that to cope with. And that's what the Apostle Paul was wanting those Colossians uh, to, 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 to realise afresh as he wrote that extract which we heard read earlier. 
he started by reminding them that they were chosen and dearly loved. They mattered to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. They didn't have to prove anything. They didn't need to be anxious about the relationship. They didn't need to get into a stew when things didn't work out. God had chosen them and loved them, and they needed to be totally secure in the relationship which he'd given them because of Jesus. And then Paul goes on and says, a whole list of things which you ought to be like, but there's one clue which will help take all the pressure off. And he calls them to be kind. And of course, that's the type of word which we feel is rather wet and feeble in modern English, means nothing really. But Paul, in using a word which is translated kind here, was doing a bit of a word play originally. And the word play was, I want you to be like Jesus. It was uh, the, the, the Greek original, it's very much like Christ. He said, You're, you could totally secure in your relationship. And if you want to be increasingly the people who God wants you to be, just try and be like Jesus. Focus on him. And from him will flow all the characteristics that God wants to see in you. And he will give you the resources to make them part of your life. For myself, I found that over the years, I sometimes thought, Lord, this year, help me to be forgiving or help me to be patient. And that as I prayed that week after week, month after month, I found myself as I focused on Jesus, beginning to reflect his character. So one looks at this passage and isn't immediately put off by the list of things which we, we need to get right. But in the security of our relationship with our loving Heavenly Father, we focus on Jesus and find ourselves being changed. And so let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. In our prayers today, we continue to pray for the nations of the world, and particularly our own nation and government. We pray too for the government and people of Nigeria, of Thailand, and of the United States of America. Among our own congregation, we pray for Kevin, 
and BB and Mike, our new church wardens. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, Set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace so to follow their good examples, that with them, we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. 
It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there, by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death, until his coming again. Hear us, O Heavenly Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. body of Christ. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Almighty Lord and everlasting God, grant, we beseech thee, to direct, sanctify, and govern both our hearts and bodies in the way of thy laws and in the works of thy commandments, that through thy most mighty protection, both here and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.